This is chapter 12. I'm going to start at verse 1 and it reads, Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. Verse 2 and it reads, While the sun or the light or the moon or the stars be not darkened, nor the clouds return after the rain. Verse 3, In the days when the keepers of the house shall tremble, and the strong men shall bow themselves, and the grinders cease, because they are few. And when you go into the word grinders, basically, it's going into the jobs. That being their employment. <laughs> as a spirit. Uh, so it says, And the grinders cease, because they are few, and those that look out of the windows be darkened. Verse 4, And the doors shall be shut in the streets, when the sound of the grinding is low. Meaning, when there's few jobs out here. And ye sh it's like, and he shall rise up at the voice of the bird. And the, all the daughters of music shall be brought low. I'm going to start off by giving all praise. Verse 5. Peace and salutation to the Akim across the four corners of the earth. Pushing his truth with faith and with sincerity, as well as risking their lives and the freedom to do so, now more so than ever. Shalom to the Aguatini Akim up there listening and learning, Lord willingly, this is edifying. Shalom to the Israelite foreigners scattered abroad in the land of other nations, if you're unlike the other nations, by whom subscribe to this truth, to you I say Shalom. This is the brother Yahweh Sapp out of the GMS Cleveland Church, a fellow servant, coming at you with another lesson through the Spirit and through the power of Yahweh Shai. So this lesson is in regards to um, an article I've seen on Newsbreak app, and it says, Newsbreak is in regards to an article i seen them on Newsbreak app, and it says business, CBS, LA, buckle up America, the Fed plans to sharply boost unemployment. So that was, you know, I brought out that scripture about the grinding because basically the jobs is about to become few and far between because to check inflation, basically they have to raise the interest rates. And the number one or the first tactic that businesses use to deal with um, <clears throat> inflation is to basically um, lay off or f let go of people. So um, I'm going to read a little bit of this article, bring out some scriptures that popped in my mind through the spirit. And Lord willing, this is edifying. It reads, in case the U.S. economy wasn't hurting enough already, the Federal Reserve has a message for Americans. It's about to get much more painful. Fed Chair Jerome Powell made, the aptly clear last, made that aptly clear Last week, when the central bank projected its benchmark rate hitting 4.4 by the end of the year, even if it causes a recession, there will very likely be some softening of labor market conditions, Powell said in September 21st. Economic outlook, we will keep at it until we are confident the job is done. In plain English, that means unemployment. The Fed forecasts the unemployment rate to rise to 4.4% next year from 3.7% today, a number that implies an additional one percent 2 million people losing their jobs. I wish there was a painless way to do that. Paul said there isn't. Hurt so good. Now they trying to lightweight mocking. I'm, I'm going to probably, because, you know, the point's been made. You know, they made it. They said that they're going to basically um, have to, you know, uh, basically, they gonna unemployment is going to rise because of the fact of this inflation. It says, um, Hurt so good. Here's the idea behind why boosting the nation's unemployment could cool inflation. With an additional million or two people out of work, the newly unemployed and their families would sharply cut back on spending. Look at how they justify this shit. It, well, for most people who are still working, wage growth would flatline. When companies assume their labor costs are unlikely to rise, the theory goes they will stop hiking prices that in turn slows inflation. I do anticipate that accomplishing price stability. I do anticipate that accomplishing price stability will require slower employment growth and a somewhat higher unemployment rate. Suzanne Collins, president of the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston, said Monday in a speech, and I take very serious and I take very seriously that unemployment is painful and that it costs and its costs have been disproportionately concentrated among groups that have traditionally been marginalized. But some economists question whether crushing the job market is necessary to bring inflation to the heel. And the point is, they want everybody desperate. Or Yahweh Bashim Yahusha is creating these situations because, you know, people are going to be desperate. You know what I mean? You know, brother brought out um, at camp today about how um, with these CBDCs, they what you currently have won't transfer over. Now, he said 
I, I can't remember he said he, he remember hearing it or it was um, something that he heard, you know. So, you know, it's no guarantee what the information he was bringing out was was correct. But the truth of the matter is I could see it not being able you not being able to transfer that money over because that will put you in a state of desperation and they want you desperate. You know what I mean? So, you know, it's ultimately Yahweh Hashem Yahweh is going to test your faith. You know, scriptures talk about um, Yahweh Shah when he come back, will he find faith on the earth? Well, those that are his elect are going to have faith to the end. You know, um, you know, the Lord is creating certain conditions in the world and in our personal lives to, you know, to make you beneficial. You know what I mean? You know, certain brothers was bringing that out. You know, as far as certain things that happen in the world, the scriptures tell you um, what can man understand of not judgment. You know, roughly paraphrased, you know, when we see certain things with a spiritual eye, we recognize that it's judgment. You know, brother was going into how it was a, a child that shot up their mother. I was like, damn, that's a cold judgment. You know, I think three year old shot shot her mother or father. I can't remember, but a, 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 a individual that doesn't have the spiritual eye self won't understand that's judgment. You know what I mean? Tells you the most high love of judgment and judge of every day. But um, so. You know, the Lord is basically um, working to work to put everybody in a situation where you're going to be desperate. You know, so the lack of jobs is going to put people in a more desperate state to because because ultimately what's going to happen is with the conditions, people are going to run to the government for help. And when you run to the government for help, it's going to also put in or give the government more control. So. Um, I'm going to bring out some of these scriptures. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 19. You know, go to scripture because it goes into the lack of jobs. This is Isaiah 19 and 15. Neither shall there be any work for Egypt, which um, we're talking about the modern day Egypt, um, which is Babylon, the great America. You know, Egypt simply means bondage. You know, Mizraim was the name of um, Ham's um, son that, you know, Egypt is the Greek way of saying Mizraim. Um, neither shall there be any work for Egypt and America is that modern day Egypt, which the hair or tail branch or rush may do. And that day shall Egypt be like unto women and they shall be afraid and fear because of the shaking of the hand of the Lord of hosts, which he shake up over it. You know, so in that day, because the lack of work, <laughs> jobs is going, crime is going to increase. You know, when people have necessity of things that just doesn't mean that they're just gonna go way out you know you don't have people that's desperate times call for desperate measures you know um like gerald salente always says when people lose everything they lose it you know that's why you got incidents where people why do you think the white house is uh, uh surrounded by a a, a fence because <laughs> they already know you know you've had incidents where people literally try to run up on the, the white house where they've had to actually take people out because people are you know, they seeing how corrupt this government is and they want answers. You know what I mean? You know, these people are going to want to hold these politicians that put them in this predicament accountable. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, right now you got America sending billions of dollars over to Ukraine. Yet and still you got um, states and individuals here that are suffering. You know, they gave you these little stimulus um, checks. People thought that everything was sweet. And now when people need the help the most, they're not trying to give you shit. <laughs> Set you up for failure. You know what I mean? So, um, what I want, this is the book of um, Ezekiel chapter 7. And this is a good chapter, but I only want the point. Um. Ezekiel 7 and 3, now is the end come upon thee, and I will send my anger upon thee, and I will judge thee according to thy ways, and will recompense upon thee all thine abominations. And my eyes shall not spare thee, neither will I have pity, but I will recompense thy ways upon thee, and thine abominations shall be in the midst of thee. And ye shall know that I am the Lord Yahweh, by Hashem Yahushai. Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, by Hashem Yahushai, evil and only evil, behold, is come. And when you go to word evil, evil, eve meaning time, and ill meaning bad. So bad times is coming and end is come. The end is come and watch it for thee. Behold, it is come. So we see in the end of this man's, you know, the, 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 those, those, those uh, high and haunty looks and days of America. You know, when America was just thinking they was the shit, you know, um, looking down on these other countries. Now you looking like a second or third world country. You know what I mean? Brother was just bringing out about how you had um, 
a lot of things going on as far as, you know, the STDs are up, you know, syphilis and HIV. And then also you got, um, you know, you got a lot of people that's missing meals. And then you got um, a lot of people quiet quitting. People are miserable in, in, in America. And it's a scripture that talk about the mirth being gone. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? You know, people still trying to occupy themselves in the the, the um, fact that, you know, um, oh, yeah, well, they'll go watch a, a football game or go to, out to a game or, you know. But, you know, the, the, you, you can see the, the mirth of this place is is, is, is gone for real. And, and, and wait till, like I said, you know, something major happens. So um, this is the book of Ephesians chapter 5 because we're supposed to be circumspect, looking at the times, watching the signs, you know, because we know the days are evil. This is Ephesians 5 and first, um, I'm going to start at 14. Wherefore he say, say of awake thou that sleepest and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. And it makes me think of Romans chapter 13. Now it's high time to wake up out of sleep. Verse um, 15. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Because a fool is not going to be regarding the time we're in or what's going on. Right now we are in grace to basically get all you can from your Yahweh Shem Yahweh for the times that's approaching. We were brothers just bringing it out, you know. The Lord can do anything, but at the end of the day, you know, certain brothers got bug out bags and whatnot, you know, and that's not foolish. That's not a foolish thought because you might have to leave at any time. That's the whole point of Passover. Passover, you know, you ate with your with your staff in hand and, and you ate the food quickly because you were going to be on the move. So that's going to happen again. So there's nothing off to have a bug out bag, but at the same time to, to put all your trust and faith in that because, you know, you might have a Bible in there, but it's going to be what's within you. You know what I mean? You know, so, you know, you're going to have to have, that's what the scriptures talk about, eat this road. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. So, like I said, we know that we're coming into bad times because the lack of jobs is going to do an increase in crime. You know, and a lot, a lot of people, a lot of people going to go without food. And they and they talking about it just so nonchalantly, you know what I mean? That's going to balance out inflation. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and at the end of the day, you know, we are going to suffer these things, too. But also it talks about, um, you know, um, he that's with you is 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 is, is, um, is more powerful than the world. Roughly paraphrasing. Yeah. Scriptures talk about how Yahweh shall overcame the world. So, you know, you know, he 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 conquered the world. You know, I mean, he conquered this wicked ass world um, without, you know, keeping all the law, statutes, and commandments without going off. So, you know, we know it's possible, you know, and, and Yahweh Shah is our example to that. So we put our trust in Yahweh Shah. It tells you um, in the scriptures, um, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run off, run off, run off to it, roughly paraphrased. Um, Psalm 91 talks about um, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, which is this truth, you know, and when you believe in that, then you know that the Lord got us, you know what I mean? The book of Matthew chapter 28 reads, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. You know, so as long as we got our trust and our faith in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, you, you know what I mean? Cause like I said, we're going to experience these things too, but you know, that's how the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is going to bring his glory back into the earth. Because you're going to have men and women that's going to be in the midst of all this, um, dealing with it, but still overcoming, you know, that's going to be a hell of a faith booster. Just imagine when the spiritual powers be actually displayed for the world to see. You know what I mean? And like the brother brought out, every man that put his hand to the plow and fell off or looked back, they're going to feel goofy. They're going to feel stupid. Uh, that's it. You know what I mean? Um, you know, scriptures in the book of Jeremiah talks about Cursed be the man that trusts in man, but um, it says, blessed is the man that trusts in Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah. So, you know, the hopeful elect is going to put all their trust in Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah. Even with the rough times is coming, you know, like I said, you had brothers that was put, presented with those situations. You had brothers lose jobs, walk away from jobs when that jump shot came into play and they stayed, remained faithful. And guess what? The Lord provided and took care of them. Now you got people sitting up there to talk about it, the pandemic over. <laughs> you know what I mean? You got people falling out, dying. They just said Kool Aid just died. You know what I mean? Just uh, you know what I mean? You, you got these celebrities dropping like like flies. You know, 
And, and we hoping to be protected from that through the power and grace of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah. So if you're a so-called black, Hispanic, Native American, Seminole, Indian, West Indian, or Haitian, I implore you to come back to the law, statutes, and commandments of your power, Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah, or you will be destroyed. And with that, I want to give all praises, all honor, and all glory to call Allah Yom La Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shah Ba'ashem Rachak. Kodash Brakatham, double honors to my apostles, the elders, great millstone, teaching to rule well. Peace and salutations to the Akim. Across the four corners of the earth, pushing his truth with faith and with sincerity, as well as risking their lives and their freedom to do so, not more so than ever. Shalom to the Akwa, the Akim, out the lesson of learning. Lord willingly, this is edifying. Shalom to those white foreigners scattered abroad in the land of other nations, appearing like the other nations, with whom subscribe to this truth. To you, I say Shalom. Till next time, I'm able to come with another lesson. Shalom, Shalom. Mawath Lababoa, Shalom.